Made it. I made it. You made it. <laughs> I made it. <laughs> What's happening? Yeah, Glenn, I was kind of, uh, man, I was uh, really bummed out about yeah. uh, last weekend because uh, I I felt what you were saying was really important and yeah. it didn't record and oh uh, man that's well the cell uh, has believed from the very beginning that something that happened uh with your recording could happen anytime so they had arranged for any time that there's a call between you and I or Danny and I mm-hmm. that their recorders would pick up every word. So it's there. It's there, but who can access it? Only them. <laughs> yeah, they can access it because they want to make uh, a certain number of statements I've made to you and Danny clear to the world at the appropriate moment. Oh, okay. Well, I'm glad to be able to help in that respect. <laughs> and, uh... Well, it's it was a backup thing that may never have been used, but uh, all of a sudden was needed. So it's always a good thing that there are other people who think beyond what I can imagine. I mean, yeah, we're approaching, uh, I mean, next year, 2020. And if if I understand things correctly, uh, on their side, they, I, I think they're going to um, uh, release or... Uh, have some type of activity for 2020, right? They're going to have some type of, like, uh, information. I can, I can uh, repeat to you how I put it the first time was how they put it to me. Mm-hmm. There is a period of time starting in 1972 to 1976 where this plan was set up and the farm here uh, building the house that you stayed in was built. It was then put in limbo until such time as was needed. And in uh, the year uh, 19... Uh, 76 they stated that there would be a time period leading to 2062 give or take four years in which everything that we know as the world the world we live in will change. That the most important period is the 40 years between 2018 and 2058, which gives four years to 62. And uh, out of that, most knowledge would be passed on in the year 2020 to 2022. And how that knowledge would be passed on would not necessarily be with words, but with cataclysmic events. So the Lou at the Sioux was explained to be the flushing of the Great Lakes. And most likely to occur sometime before 2022, probably sometime before 2020, but not necessarily so. 
So the concept is that God, the imposter of creation, has a plan, and the plan is outer space. Developing outer space seems to have been the priority of 2018 and 2019, uh, talking about bases in space, bases on the moon, bases on Mars, exploring Venus, um, and antennas being put up by the thousands to detect signals that would come either from uh, our own area, the Milky Way, excuse me, I'm burping, Uh, the Milky Way, or out of this entire area to what is known as the universe. Unknown to most people, there is a place called the fifth dimension, which religion has called heaven. And in that space called heaven, most of the people who have been allowed to go there instead of waiting outside in purgatory until their case is determined in the pineal court, most of the people that have gone there have been appointees of nuns. Over the last 10,000 years, every religion that develops eventually turns to women to store their knowledge, and that group of women would be known as nuns. And they have more knowledge than anybody else, and because a lot of people, a lot of women, have joined them over the years, Uh, after their husbands died or was killed in war, pestilence, famine, or disease of some kind, uh, and they don't have the knowledge to maintain the properties and the funds and all of that. So they basically are enticed to join the nuns and all of that capital, whether it be material capital or real estate or cash, um, is added to a pot that is so phenomenal that you couldn't understand it, nor could I, if we tried to imagine how much they have set aside One of the rules they have is they never spend capital, never spend what they receive, but only the interest on that, and therefore they have devised such things as as the stock market, banks, uh, insurance companies, Uh, those types of places, bureaucracies within government who funnel off, skim off money like Hydro does by sending phony bills and moving money outside the government while they write off the bill. Uh, For example, in, in taxes, If they say you owe taxes, you haven't paid it in 10 years, they'll tell the government they write it off. But in fact, what they do is they pass it on to a collection agency who then gets whatever they can while a person is alive or more often than not, 
with the help of lawyers uh, when the um, estate is being divided after the death of the person concerned. And they move that money into um, places like the UN, uh, who uh, control the world now. The UN uh, in French, UN means one, R, one. And if you take your dollar bill and you turn it around, have you got a dollar bill? I'm poor, so I, I'll see if I can. <laughs> <laughs> I, think I don't know if anybody still has that considered to be useless. I, I think I have one. Hold on, let me see. Uh, yeah, I have one. Take my dollar okay. bill. Take your dollar bill and turn it to the back. Mm-hmm. And in the circle on the left, you'll see the all-seeing eye. Mm-hmm. And then in the middle, the most important part is what does it say? Read it for me. In God we trust one. Yeah. So it's not God that you're trusting. It's one. Mm -hmm. When you say in God we trust and you stop there, you're redirecting the thought to something which is not true. We don't trust God. What we trust is one. Mm. And one is creation. But one on earth, according to most people you speak to, is God. Mm. That's where the thing goes logically wrong people misunderstand from the beginning who's in charge and since God is the original hermaphrodite one that began uh, the creation of human beings and only survived because of cats and goats that fed it along the way. And then, like the roots of a tree, made more and more people until it developed like a fir tree, uh, the cone that becomes the seed for uh, making... uh, unattached individuals, freelancing, flowing originals, just like the cone, and that becomes like the new one for Earth, not the original one, but the new one for Earth created the new one, hermaphrodite, all linked through the roots to make more of itself within a limited space, and then the seed, the cone, that makes human beings of two uh, sexes, um, male and female, and can move away from the original in order to create a total of about 15 billion people Uh, who were needed to form a laboratory, just like in England the two main political parties are called Labour and Tories. And the Tory is, of course, a story rather than a truth. It's a fictional story, as you find in most books, that would not be allowed to be printed if they claim to be the truth, even though they, the authors, do believe them to be the truth. For the purpose of getting it printed, they have to allow the writing on the first or second inside page that all the characters are fictional and the story is fictional. 
when in fact it's true and therefore most people don't read it for the truth they just read it for a concept so here we are Mm -hmm. I went to the bank this morning and discovered that for the third month in a row um, the um, um, Government of Canada's Department of uh, Revenue has stolen another close to $900 off of my pension for the third month in a row. However, it is the first time they admit to anything in writing and um, I can read what they sent to me. Okay. Mind you, sending me a letter on August the 9th about something that they did in June and July is not uh, going to assist them in denying that they, in fact, stole it. Because by not describing what they were doing beforehand and doing it only after they did it twice, uh, it doesn't really matter. So the letter is from Canada Revenue Agency, addressed to Glenn Keeley. We have received your request to adjust your 2018 income tax return. I have not spoken to anybody there. The only person they've spoken to is their own representative in H&R Block, who happens to be one of their own. Uh, So I move to paragraph two. Due to the complex nature of the change, it will take longer to be processed. The time requires to complete a complex adjustment varies with the type of request and the individual circumstances involved. Chapter 3, when your adjustment is complete, we will send you a notice of reassessment. This notice will reflect the changes made to your return. In situations where requested changes have not been accepted, only partially accepted, or were not required, we will send a letter of explanation under separate cover. We appreciate your patience as we work to finalize your request. I am not patient. I didn't request. And... I'm telling them if they don't put the money back that they stole, they and their relatives in both directions, parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, children, uh, nieces, aunts, whatever, all have the same DNA in their bodies and therefore will all suffer the same consequences, which is once their DNA is divided from their uh, electromagnetism, both will be reunited at the court in Antarctica and put on a block of ice and shipped out into the Pacific where they will sink to the bottom, where plates of the earth uh, are destroyed by one going underneath the other one and crunching it to zero. Uh, The most valuable thing on earth, you know, is diamonds, and diamonds are made at the core of the earth. So maybe... 
part of them will uh, one day return as someone's engagement ring, but that's the best they could ever hope for. All of them, all of their children, all of their grandchildren, anybody that has the same DNA will suffer the consequences of their action. And when I say their, I mean the government of Canada, which involves revenue, but also involves provincial governments. It involves um, immigration. It involves the police, the deportation illegally of Jennifer, holding her in jail while they tried to figure out a plan to get a a judge to call her crazy and couldn't do it. Those judges will survive, but the people who tried to do it to Jennifer and eventually just broke all laws of Canada and got on a plane and, and kidnapped her to California, all of those people will pay the price. The lineup waiting to pay the price is almost as bad as the price itself. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. I'm getting a call from Jennifer. I'll have to leave. Okay. All okay. Right. Bye. Right. Bye. The other day you mentioned, that's, uh, I thought this was important, um, you were talking about how you heard what sounded like gunfire. Yeah. And I thought people should know that, you know, that that activity is, you know, could be occurring where you, yeah. where you are. And well, it was uh, an eventful day that, that uh, began relatively early in the morning, probably after 9, but not after 10 or thereabouts, somewhere in there. And uh, it was what sounded to me uh, like a rifle, semi-automatic, there may have been more than one because there was kind of a a shift in the sound uh, at one stage of the game. I don't know if you can do that on the same rifle or it requires two. And I counted um, up to about 100 as they were going off and wondering, you know, when I'd see a police car go by and this was a neighborhood that this was occurring in, uh, mind you, uh, behind the houses uh, on this side is our farm. And if it's across the street, well, then there's a creek behind them. So hard to tell exactly where the sounds were coming from. Uh, They stopped for a while uh, in the morning and then began again uh, and continued with, with at least as many shots, if not more, in the afternoon, probably total of Oh, there's Jennifer. Hang on, I'll call her. Okay. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, 
I told her that uh, you were on the line and that I'd call you back, call her back shortly. Yeah, I don't want to keep you from her too long. No, I don't mm. want to. Well, that that was basically a day um, I had had similar experiences in the past. However, the sound had come from across the road and much further down the southern side to what appears when you walk by as a field. Uh, so here the big difference was this is on a road uh, that is uh, backed up. Oh, shit. I'm getting another call. I'll have to put you on hold here. Okay. I guess they hung up. Either that or it was a pocket call or something by accident. In any event, yeah, this this uh, road is basically backs up the backside of our farm on the south side. And there are houses on both sides of the street. Uh, it's a dead end. So why uh, during the day uh, nobody took the time to call the police? Is it because they knew all about it, what it was intended for? Or they're just dull? Um, no sense me calling the police because they don't do anything <laughs> to protect me on on anything, uh, including the attempt by Hydro to starve me to death or kill me or whatever. Oh. I mean, I've heard like uh, in other cases, like with um, like the stuff you hear today on the news, like with the Epstein guy. Uh, I heard yeah. a story about a journalist was writing about it, like like yeah. early on, and like I guess a year or two ago, and yeah. he woke up and there was like a bullet in front of his door. Yeah. As like a message, you know, don't write about this stuff. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, so I, I I have heard that people or criminals or whatever, they communicate in these little yeah. obscure ways that they'll know you understand, but. Not the right, yeah. but I, I don't know. I, it, you said you've experienced something like that before. How long ago? Like well, I was uh, more than once, probably last year and the year before. Uh, there was one time that I thought, and I can't be sure. Uh, but I thought I heard the sound of a bullet whistling over my head. What? Yeah. Crazy. But, you know, it, it's something you're not expecting, really, and it happens so quickly you don't realize what's going on, if that was it. Now, yeah. Maybe there was something else, I don't know. I don't I don't have an experience to draw from to compare. <laughs> Go ahead. 
Yeah. I don't get shot at, or I haven't. Well, actually, you know what? I've been around a shooting, at like yeah. a parade, but I don't. I didn't have bullets coming my way. Yeah. To me, um, it has uh, no personal effect. You know, it doesn't scare me or anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's just. Uh, adds to the experience of living in a neighborhood where it appears by inaction that all the neighbors couldn't care less, don't care about anybody else, don't um, ever ask, is there anything I can do? You know, they they and that includes close neighbors across the street or on either side. Uh, just uh, I I I can't in my mind, having been raised in Ottawa, you know, right next to the. Parliament buildings. I can't imagine the lack of empathy that I see every day now in this area. Nobody cares, and I don't know if it's they don't care about me or they just don't care about anybody. <laughs> Uh, seems to me that a number of people uh, driving by uh, wave at me, but I don't know how far away they come from. You know, they they honk their horn and wave, and so obviously they know who's here. They don't really stop and say, you know, is there anything you need or can we do something? Nobody does that. Well, anyways, it's, it all adds to the ability I then have in explaining to the court, the final court, uh, and the investigators, the cell, uh, how this world has uh, basically switched places that uh, the democratic system was uh, highlighted in Canada more than anywhere else. And, and the reporting about Canada is always about how nice Canadians are and and how caring they are and how they are the first to say sorry, you know, and, and yet that hasn't existed for uh, at least 30 years, if it ever did, but I, I wasn't kind of thinking along those lines back uh, 30 years ago, but over the last 30 years, I've seen and and heard enough things to know that it's hypocrisy. It's, it's not real. The Canadians in this neighborhood, at least, and having traveled many times across the country, uh, I've discovered, you know, that they don't really care about corruption or or lack of empathy or lack of integrity. Matter of fact, a number of times when I, in my talks, talked about uh, the... Uh, Prime Minister's office being the center of activity for a 5% kickback scheme 
only to have in question period at the end some people get up and ask me how they could get in on it. <laughs> so. But there's, there's another word I've, uh, um, that's used for uh, people. It's, um, what's the word when people just don't do anything? They're just kind of stuck in this place where they're, um, not empathy, it's, um, uh, well, they lack integrity, that's for sure. Uh, it's, um, what's the word when it's someone who's just, they're just not, they don't feel any type of way. They just don't they make it. They are dull. I don't dull. know exactly what Apathetic, word. that's the word, apathetic. Apathetic, yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah. So maybe apathetic, yeah. So uh, you know, people are like in their little shells. I don't know. Me personally, like when I see certain things talked about in the media, like 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 say when I see oh this is more lies, more lies. I just uh, it's I feel fed up, and I'm just like it's a blatant lie to me, and it's just so obvious. I just. I just don't. I don't even. It's it's I I it's kind of like I I built a uh, a um, shield yeah. around around myself. I just don't even. It's well, am I gonna am I gonna keep ripping my hair about it? I mean, sure, yeah, I do care. You know that it's a lie. You know. Yeah. I can't change that, you know. And when I no. see somebody else repeating it, it feels it angers me inside. And w- what do I do? Do I go and I go and explain it all to them? Because I have done that, and you know, I'm taken out of context. And it's... yeah. However, um, success at trying to change a population is uh, impossible, but not wasted time because apparently, according to the cell, the first thing people say when they discover that there is life after death and they're there, the first thing they'll say is, why didn't you tell me? (laughs) <laughs> and and then the answer becomes we did remember we did <laughs> Jared tried Glenn tried Danny tried Jennifer tried you know yeah. everybody that knew went and tried and didn't expect from your reactions that you would change. So here you are now, and you're asking us, people in charge of the court, to be sympathetic to one person among millions and millions and millions who demonstrated by their responses that they were not interested, couldn't care less. Now, the penalty has to be applied. And the penalty is, you see, Over there is a door leading to paradise. Over there is a door leading to the Pacific Ocean. They are comparative in some ways to what religion calls heaven and hell. Uh, But you need to be tried. 
And because you didn't have the courtesy to listen and and say, maybe you're right, maybe something I should look into. No, you you made an instant decision saying, I don't care. Leave me alone, don't bother me, I got other things to do. So right now, our answer to you has to be based upon the same logic. You want our assistance to get into court so a decision can be made to send you to paradise. The answer is no. Not only is the answer is no, you're being told, get in line. And that line might or might not bring you back for trial to the courthouse depending upon how you have acted with your view of the world. And, for example, right now, today, the government of Canada stole another $900 from Glenn Keeley's pension fund. And since this is the third month in a row, they, all of them who have ever heard the name Glenn Keeley and work within the system and have had any attachment to the activity under the title Glenn Keeley, um, they get one year for each dollar they have stolen in a waiting line called purgatory. Now, they're not going to suffer while they're there as they would in hell or what we call Uh, Pacific but the person in front of them and the person behind them they have never met before and every day they will change and never will they see anybody for 2700 years So there is a price to pay to be ignorant or arrogant to the point of of saying, leave me alone, I don't want to hear any of this. Uh, and, and that price is time in line. Time in line. Think of uh, if you're waiting to go see a movie and you are uh, in a place in the lineup close to the theater, but before you start walking around the block to get to the door. I mean, That's I, what it's all about. There has to be a penalty paid, and that has been diverted by the nuns who have given their donors preference. And all they cared about was power and control for money. Now... Paradise is being vacated by the cell, others than the ones that work with me, but cell nonetheless, are going through a place, Paradise, which the way they explain it to me would be about the same size as Antarctica. 
And every time they come across an ex-nun, they ship her out of paradise and into lineups that are hundreds of thousands of years long. But um, that's kind of uh, it's, it's strange that it's occurring. This is occurring at the same time that bureaucrats are being are being cleansed. Yeah. It's who's following who's cue over here. Yeah. Like um. That's strange. That's uh, I don't believe in coincidences, but <laughs> that can't be a coincidence. Like, not any more than anything that's happened around me in the last thirty years can be a coincidence. It's a planned action for the purpose of good or evil, depending on who's doing it. If if they're cleansing paradise from those who pretended to be good and were evil, that's only making room for the people who were good and need a place for eternity. Once they get through cleansing the place completely, they can start sending people who care to take their place. Just how do they get there, like, how did they sneak through there in the first place? Well, it's it's at the level of a decision between creation and its satrap or governor, God. Creation wanted to run the show and make the final decisions But God, his governor on earth, a nun, wanted control and convinced creation to let her try, even though she was being reminded that as God, she doesn't have all the information that she needs to make decisions, whereas creation does. And if you're making decisions without the information, you're going to make bad decisions. And creation never intended this planet to be ruled by people who care about power and money. It was intended to be ruled by people who care about other people, whether they are close or extended. We are all one family. One. There goes one again. (laughs) Yeah. Trust the run. So, I will have to depart now, getting on time to speak with Jennifer. Mrs. Keeley. Mrs. Keeley, yeah. In the red chair. In the red chair. Okay. All right. Good night, Glenn. Bye for you. Bye for now. All right.